Let's see how this goes. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to the Bees Like That podcast. As always, I'm your host, Chris. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Hold your applause, please. Um, so, an episode ago, I talked a bit about some new tech that I got and some sounds. I hope that came through, but this is the little thing that I got. It's called the Stream Deck. I'm trying it out. I'm trying to expand my my uh, the depth and breadth of my skill and experience with creating content and hopefully, like I say, make it more engaging for you guys. I think the applause is kind of funny. But anyway, um, that's what that is. All right. I've had a lot on my mind lately with regard to two topics, and they they are very closely related for me. I, 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 in my mind, don't believe that I would have a very effective version of one without the other, and I'll explain. So, fitness and recovery. Um, so, I'm going to start with recovery. I talk a lot here about different strategies and tools that I use, um, higher power, gratitude, (sighs) spiritual principles by which I live my daily life, um, a higher personal standard that I live my life at, um, which essentially covers all of my bases, right? Like if, if my personal standard of living is so incredibly high that the things that life has for me or um, the tests and stuff like that that they that come up or other standards in life they all just kind of fold naturally in and are absorbed without any real disruption to my program right <clears throat> I think I should be clear about something when I say recovery the the point and I don't know maybe people get this maybe they do but when I look around at, at some in recovery, um, no, I'm not. This isn't an attempt to work another's program or take anyone's inventory. But what I think that I observe in other people is there's an expectation for recovery and life-changing recovery by just simply arresting their active addiction or drug and alcohol use. I could be wrong. This is just the way that I view this topic and issue. Um, It's my view that recovery... So there's a saying in, in, in the program or programs that you only need to change one thing. And that's everything. I took that very seriously. Um, I, I can't, because I don't spend a lot of time in other people's minds, presume to know how seriously an individual does or does not take the program or their program. From an outside looking in, I see a lot of people struggling the way that I once did early in recovery. Um, maybe not this time, but in prior attempts at getting and staying clean. And being ultimately really confused and frustrated over what's not working and, and hearing them express openly, but this shit is just not for me. It doesn't work for some people. And today I have a very simple question. You would, you would only know that after having tried everything, right? What I mean by that is You cannot, I don't know, I couldn't in my mind rationalize an expectation for recovery and transformational change or complete moral and spiritual reformation by only stopping drinking and using drugs. It had to be everything. I had to quit smoking, which is a tough one. I quit nicotine every day. It's a daily choice. Um, but I had to change everything. I had to change the way I thought about different things, about people. That's a tough one too. I'm still working on that. Um, 
the way that I eat, the way that I treat my body, the way that I meditate, the way that I view my mortality, the way that I view the world's mortality, the way that I value finite resources, um, the way that I define friendship, the way that I experience my relationship with my wife and my marriage, the way that I experience my children, the way that I communicate with them. All of these things, in my mind, when I think of the word everything, when I was failing in all of these categories before, I needed to then make adjustments and changes in each of these areas. You can probably get a gauge, get a sense for where I'm going with this. So, when I view people in, a, in what it looks like to be a perpetual state of, of disconnectedness, going to meetings, complaining, complaining. I'm not talking about people who are like five years in, six years in, ten years in. Now, there's no standard timeline for when people like have peace and like serenity in their lives or choose to not complain about their lives every day or their partners or bemoan their stations, whatever they look like. Um, it just seems odd to me that this is a life that you choose and define as better than when you had before. And perhaps it is. I, I, whatever. That's, that's not for me to judge. It's a subjective experience, this whole thing called joy and happiness. Um, but just looking like if from all points of view, continuing to smoke cigarettes, continuing to stay up late, Continuing to sleep in, continuing to have a poor attitude, continuing to be um, dishonest, right? Uh, continuing to eat poorly most of the time instead of trying to do like an 80-20 thing. Maybe you're not counting macros and calories and all that shit, but you're making more intentional and mindful choices. You know what I mean? Some whole foods and some greens and shit like that, but you're not going to, you know food co-op and just like jumping out the deep end, jumping out the window with it, you know, but you're trying to be more mindful and, and see how these different changes and choices impact your body. But you're not doing any of that stuff. You're not doing none of that stuff. You're still not engaging with your kids, even though they're back in your care or your, you know, your, your relationship now is, is quote unquote working out because y'all aren't drinking and drugging anymore, but you don't talk, you don't hang out, you don't spend no time together. You don't do things with one another to, Fulfill and enrich this relationship, this partnership that you have. I'm not convinced that that's a version of recovery for anyone. And then if you add on top of it, low-key, I know some of y'all still out there smoking a little bit of weed. Now, if we're talking about the, the definition of recovery, that as I understand it, it includes all mood and mind-altering substances, Right? That means weed. Now, granted, there is a solid argument that the average smoker, or shit, you can partake in, in that shit in many different ways now, but the average person who does partake, you aren't gonna, you don't hear many stories of just like the regular Joe Schmo um, out committing robberies for a 20 sack or, you know what I'm saying, like emptying out their kid's savings account to get... <laughs> To get weed. I mean, not to say that it doesn't happen. It may out there somewhere, but you rarely hear stories like that about weed. I'm just saying, from a recovery standpoint, from an abstinence standpoint, it's just one of those things that I don't know that I'd be willing to risk. It just doesn't seem worth it to me. And it, it points in the direction, in my mind at least, that you still have a need to change your state of consciousness, to escape via these exogenous chemicals or compounds, getting away from your reality, although knowing it's going to be sitting right there next to your house shoes, <laughs> stronger than ever when you get back, come down, whatever, wake up, you get the picture. So... I'm 
supremely grateful that that fitness and bodybuilding are, are things that I have an interest in and that I'm good at um, because it gives me a very effective outlet and the way that my brain works it's it's nice to have that space in my day where I a have to show up and be present and B requires fair degree of effort to get the, the, the to achieve the fitness goals that I have and see it's the one time in my day where my head and my body are doing the same thing without really having to be reeled back in you know every f- three to five minutes you know they're just kind of just in there kicking it and doing it which is nice um, and then I can kind of exercise that energy this is the 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 other side of it, I can. It's kind of like it's meditative and cathartic for me. I can release some of this other energy, leave that there, go back into the rest of my day, and anxiety's gone. You know, the edginess is gone. Mostly, you know, there's everybody have their days, but you know, stuff is gone. And when it comes to fitness, and I've said this a million times, it is baffling baffling just how eager so many people are to have the psychology of it is so crazy to me to have the easiest way possible for some of the most profound rewards regarding fitness so i mean like muscle tissue and cardiovascular endurance and overall health and shit like that if there's a way to peep, if someone could do that by hitting a button, figure out how to how to uh, how to manufacture and, and box that up. Elon Musk, you'd be a millionaire, but any or a trillionaire, millionaire, idiot. Uh, anyway, where am I going with this fitness talk? So, if you have any fitness goals, and I made a post about this earlier. There are a few things that you're just going to have to come to grips with. And I don't want to misquote my own post. I'm going to pull this up really quick. So, when I talk about building and practicing habits, um, actually, I don't need that. This is, if you ever find yourself in a situation where, let's say you've been working out, you're an intermediate lifter or, you know, worker outer, say you've been working out for three to five years. But if you were to be put into a situation where you're in a, you were, are in a gym by yourself and told to train, you feel panic. You would start to panic and you feel stuck and you don't know what to do and you're questioning yourself. Even though any of the moves that you've learned and performed over the last three to five years would be correct and you know which muscle groups they would train and how you are supposed to execute these movements... It's you telling you to do it and not me or someone else. So therefore, you second guess the the validity or effectiveness. You don't know how to program now, which is crazy talk. Crazy. So I encourage anyone that I work with within fitness to pay attention. You're paying money, so you might as well pay attention. These are things that are going to that that have compounding interest and value over time. Right. The more you learn, refine and um, begin to adjust and apply them in your life as your needs change, as you as you progress, your needs will change. Um, If you're not paying attention, you're just giving your money away. This is this isn't meant to be like a like a 12 week thing where you don't pick up, pick anything up and you don't leave with any kind of like without being informed at all or learn how to even program in the most basic way, nutrition, 
and movement inside of the gym, rest and recovery. This is all like day one shit. And people think that this stuff is complicated and it's really not. It's super simple. Where people get tripped up is A, self-confidence is a big deal. I appreciate that. Plays a huge part into the reason why people don't get started and give up, right? Because they see that progress coming in. They may hit a plateau. They don't know how to adjust and kind of navigate around that. So they quit. They think they can't do it. And B, people just don't want to fucking work hard for the shit that they want. Now, when it comes to fitness, it's crazy. You will see, like, I, I trip out sometimes. I watch, I see these reels, and they're funny, but it shows people, like, jumping on trampolines with heavy, with, with boxing gloves on, hitting heavy bags, and then, like, what was the other one? The other one was, like, these people just, like, bouncing around on these, like, springy shoes, just jumping like a crazy jackrabbit. I'm like... Okay, man, listen, if, if that's what it takes to get you to get your body moving, cool, I guess. <laughs> well, what happens when you're sick of jumping around? Anyway. The other larger parallel that I draw between fitness and recovery is if you want the kind of changes in your body that you have struggled to see or realize until this point, you have to change basically everything that you do. The way that you look at food, a lot of people, women especially, sorry ladies, I ain't coming for you, but I gotta tell the truth, especially women view food as their enemy, which is literally crazy to look at the thing that keeps you alive <laughs> as your enemy. Um, and the... The idea is that less is more. So the less food that I eat and the more I move my body, the, the more weight I will lose. Now, this point is pretty significant. Weight loss and fat loss. This, again, is where I see a lot of women get tripped up. You're more concerned with weight loss and looking at that number on the scale, which doesn't mean poop. It can fluctuate six to eight pounds a day, especially with women and your hormones, um, you know, from day to day, water retention, all that kind of stuff. It can really fluctuate. So a, a day to day examination of your weight on the scale is probably a bad idea. Um, we, it would be a better idea to focus on fat loss instead of weight loss, because when you're looking at weight loss, if, if your focus is strictly weight loss, that tells me immediately that you don't have as much of an interest as you should in building and keeping muscle, which happens to be the most anabolic thing you can do for your body regarding fat loss, which is really what you want. Because if you just focus on weight loss, what's going to happen is you'll definitely see that number go down, but you have zero idea zero idea now none of these things are absolutes or a hundred percent like accurate but we have tools and approaches that give us a pretty damn good idea about how much muscle we are able to keep and how much fat we are burning off right and while maximizing the first or sorry yeah well maximizing both maximizing muscle that we keep and maximizing fat loss while keeping muscle um, if you're not using any of these tools to measure either of those or to ensure either of those, um, you're going to lose both and there's no way of knowing how much, but the sad truth is once that number on the scale changes, you're just going to have a smaller version of the body you already don't like. None of the, f the toned and fit tight, um, you know, muscles or any of that kind of stuff are going to show for you because you don't have any muscle to show them with. Does that make sense? So you got to lift weights. You got to buy the food. You got to cook the food. You got to eat the damn food. And if your coach tells you to eat more food, eat more food. Don't take it upon yourself 
to eat less food just because in the short term that will make the number on the scale go down. I'm telling you, you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're completely undermining all of your efforts in the gym and outside of the gym by doing this. This is all over social media. It's all over like, you know, um, anywhere that, that fitness information is accessible and people just they can't wrap their heads around this simple, simple concept. You can only reduce your calories so far before you hit a plateau. And then if you were to reduce them more, that would be to very dangerously unhealthy levels. And you risk like some very significant health um, issues, right? We don't even want to go there. But this speaks to, again, like that deficit mindset. Well, as long as I just keep... Reducing, 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 and working hard and working hard, calories in, calories out. It doesn't work like that. You reduce to a certain point. Now you have no choice but to increase your calories and, for lack of a better term, ease of use rather, heal your metabolism, which essentially what you're doing is you're resensitizing your body to food, sugar, shit like that, helping it not relearn, but begin to partition nutrients correctly and instead of partitioning them strictly for fat storage because you're starving yourself and you're eating yourself alive, literally, with no nutrition and high degrees of energy output every single day and you wonder why you feel like shit. Come on. So we're going to bring your calories back up this is going to kind of reset everything. It's going to reset your baseline or your maintenance level again. So it can go from 1,200 calories maintenance, keeping you the same weight and size that you are, and bringing it up to maybe 25, 2,600 calories. So that way, when you reduce your calories to 2,000 calories, you start losing fat again. And then, oh boy, it starts to slow down. What do you do? You don't reduce it again. You bring it back up for a little bit. Reset that maintenance baseline and then reduce again. You do this over and over and over time, you will get to your goal, but you must be patient. And you can't begin to lean into your lower self habits. That is the bad advice from people at the gym about being depleted and how they like to feel depleted. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're just stuck in this weird psychology that tells you that that's how you're supposed to feel, that that is good, that that is fit, that that is warrior mentality, when it's all complete nonsense, crazy talk. You must feed yourself, feed your body to get from it the stuff that you want. Meeting your fitness goals, higher performance, better sleep, longevity in life, being able to play with your grandkids and not feeling sore and, and icky and cranky and stuff all the time. And no, the best option is not to have three or four protein shakes a day. <laughs> Whole foods are usually the best option. Got a bit, went on a bit of a tangent there. I apologize, but uh, bringing it back, change everything. Change everything. It can feel overwhelming, but the good news is you have time. And barring some medical issues or like, the, you know, if unless you're going to die tomorrow and you have like X amount of time to, to lose some significant amount of weight, you have time. Be patient. Be patient. And you have to build momentum. So what that means is, no, nah, homie, you don't get cheap meals right off the bat. You don't, you probably should avoid cheat meals for your first four weeks. You got to build some momentum. You know what I mean? Get into it. You ain't done shit yet. So no, you don't deserve it yet. And stop feeling bad for yourself. Oh, I miss this food or oh, I want that food. Shut it down. Shut it down. I love food too. I have a bodybuilding show that I'm about to compete in in a couple weeks and I have my show day treats ready already. So I get it. I understand. But they're not getting touched until that day.
because I have a goal in mind. I understand that it's, it's up to me. How I show up is up to me, right? Now, I can give in and I can quit on myself, but I've made a promise and a commitment, not just to myself, but to my coach, that I won't do that. that I'm going to stay dedicated and I'm going to stay committed because these things are important to me. It's less about the show. Of course, I want to I wanna place well. First place would be freaking amazing, but it's less about the placing and it's more about what I've learned over the last year where a lot of people, my, my last cl- coach included, counted me out and thought I would be in the wind by now, but I'm not. And I've had some pretty significant setbacks, but I'm still here. I'm still going to step on that stage and I'll be 20 pounds heavier than last year and looking crazy. <laughs> um, but that process is the experience, right? That's where I, I gain all of these tools, all of this wisdom, and all these little nuggets that I've ne- I never would have seen if I'd not been paying attention. Even though I have a coach, I still ha- it's my responsibility to ask questions and then look at like, oh, she's probably doing this to get this or to do this or do this. And then when I ask, like, yeah, that's that's very good insight. Like, you get it. And if I'm wrong, be like, no, that's not at all what we're doing. <laughs> it's because of this. But that's how you learn. You can't be embarrassed or ashamed to ask questions about just because this stuff is simple. Now I'm talking about bodybuilding, but other like fitness in general, like your overall health and fitness, just because the, 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 the overall principles are very simple doesn't mean that you should know everything. However, if you've been around this shit for, you know, the last three years, you really don't have a lot of excuses, right? For not pulling the trigger. Like you, I, when I tell my clients all the time, like, I don't want a client for life. We can be cool, but I don't want your money for life. If, if you're still coming to me in five years, wanting nutrition programming and training programming, I haven't done my job. Neither one of us has done our jobs because you shouldn't need me at five years. You should not need me unless you're like some kind of competitive athlete or like you're a bodybuilder. Now, I'm not a bodybuilding coach, but unless there's something like that where like you need an extra set of eyes to find some flaws or to like bring up certain things that you may have a hard time being objective, viewing in yourself, absolutely zero reason why you would need me or any other coach if you've been training for like five years. I mean, now I get community and I get accountability and stuff like that, but just like in recovery, dog. There's going to be a, like, when your head hits that pillow, it's you in there. There's nobody else in there but you. You're going to have to get them. You're going to have to become very comfortable with being able to make some of these decisions on your own, like a big boy and like a big girl. You can do it. 100%. Um, and recovery, that's a bit different, right? Um, I, I get, like, there are going to be people in recovery who need that sense of community. Like my wife is one of them. She needs more of that community connection than I do. And that's cool. That's cool. But I've even seen her grow in that in in a lot of ways and, and become way more badass and independent in her recovery and not need as much of that, which is awesome to see. But just making that distinction, understanding that that that's a reality for some people, and they're going to need that that daily heavy connection <laughs> for uh, you know possibly the rest of their lives. Um, <clears throat> but I, I mean, this stuff is is not really debatable. So if you ain't do it on the way in, do it on the way out. Hit that like, subscribe, and post notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the cool shit we talk about here in the Be Like That podcast. Peace, y'all.